Hey guys. Uh, I thought I might do a little bit of a digital painting exercise with you all here today. So let's get stuck in. I've got a drawing that I've done here and it's on its own layer. Now this layer, when you normally open a file, your blending mode should be normal. So first thing you want to do is change that to multiply and that will cause the colors underneath to show through and the line work on top to remain. So I'm going to create a new layer and this is where I will be doing the majority of my coloring. So this top layer is going to remain at multiply and I'm going to lock that down so I pretty much don't mess it up. Um, now I'm going to use my, <coughs> excuse me, my magic wand and I've drawn this in such a way that there are no gaps in my line work. So my magic wand's going to uh, find an edge and stop. Okay, so that's, that's a, just how I've done this. Uh, yours might be a little bit different. So I'm just going to add shift. Shift, and I'm picking up the background, all of the background. I'm not selecting the girl, I'm selecting the background. That's pretty good. Okay, so I've got the background. Now, I don't want the background, I want the girl. So what I need to do is invert my selection. So you can go into the selection menu and invert selection or command shift I. Either way, we'll give you an inversion of your selection. Now I've got the girl. It's just a nice way to do this. So I'm going to get a brush and what I'm going to do is just get my brush size up a little bit and I'm going to lay down pretty much a base colour. Doesn't matter too much. It's just the base. So having isolated the entire girl, I can just give her that really quick, quick fix of colour and I'm good to go. So I've got a really nice starting point for my illustration. Fantastic. It's all on its own layer, which is just what I want. Now, what I need to do is I need to obviously add some highlights and shadows. So I'm going to be doing that with my quick selection tool. And I want to have sample all layers checked. I'm just going to pick out some of the sort of the broader areas, perhaps of the skin I'll do firstly. So I'm going to speed through this guy so obviously it may not be as beautiful as what you might do but I'm just going to speed through this just for the point of having a fairly quick tutorial so I've got my my uh, girl selected her skin tones and I'm just going to darken that off a little bit there got a nice soft brush I like a soft brush but you know use whatever you like and you can play get your whoops get your brush tool select it Mine's a bit big. And I can just start to introduce some tones into her and shadows are your best friend when you're, when you're illustrating. Always get some shadows in there. Just really will bring artwork to life. So just getting shadows where light is cast. Pick a light source, you know, wherever it's, in my case, I've decided that it's gonna come from my left to my right. I'm just putting in some basic sort of shading where I've sort of just really gonna push those shadows. Guys, really shadows are your best friend as an illustrator. Always look for the shadows and really pump the shadows. Okay, that's a little bit there. I've lost a little bit of that. So I might just give that a touch up through here. Nice, okay, so her skin tones are pretty sorted. We can adjust as we go. So I'm just gonna do some of the clothing now. So, uh, Quick selection is probably my best bet at this sort of thing. So some of her garments that she might be wearing. Got some pants. And now that they're selected, I can pick a different colour. So if I go with a sort of a greyish blue, I'm just going to really hit those with a big flat broad colour. Like so. And again, I want to put my shadows in. So I'm just darkening that colour off a little bit. And you can play with your opacities of this brush. So instead of going in 100%, changing the number pad on the top of your keys, one through nine, five represents 50%. And you can generally just build your tones up like that. I find that's a really not a bad way to just build up your tones. And again, I'm looking for those shadows. All right, okay. I'll just do one or two of these other things here. So I'm gonna get my selection tool, W. Maybe I've got that, she's got a wood shield. Isolating bits and pieces. Maybe this might be made of wood. This look similar colour, her boots and such. 
Um, let me read that part there. Maybe some of that. So I've got another colour going on now. I might pick a slightly orangish colour. That might be good. Okay, B for brush. B back to brush. Just whack those colours in. Pretty nice. Okay, that's decent. Getting some colour in the job very, very quickly. Um, going along here. So I need some shadows in these things. So again, where you see shadow, or where you see um, light sources, as I say, always looking, looking to find those light sources. I'm just going to colour this in. Just get some shadow in into here. Just pick that colour. And I might harden that brush up in certain areas where you have hard objects. You're generally going to find harder shadows. So things that are such like so. It's going to cast a slightly harder shadow than a soft thing. That is all right. All right. So that's kind of good. Uh, looking for those shadows, guys. Really will bring artwork to life. Okay. Looking good, guys. Um, now I'm going to um, carry on with this thing here. So I've got this hair element here. So when I have hair, a great way to represent hair is by creating your own custom brush. And that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm just going to get a regular brush. I might make it mid, mid hardness, kind of small. Yep. And kind of round. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to get, get my brush. I'm going to paint a couple of just a couple of little spots like this. And imagine if you're looking down on your toothbrush or your hairbrush, what would it look like? That's what I'm trying to build. Just a couple of little tiny spots like that. It's on its own layer. So I'm going to isolate those guys like that with a marquee selection. And I'm going to edit. And I'm going to define that as a brush preset. Beautiful. There's my brush. Okay, great. Now I don't need that anymore. I have built that brush and it's going to do this. So it's not exactly what I want yet. So I'm going to go into my brush uh, settings. One thing I'm probably going to need to change is this thing called spacing. That's really, I don't want any spacing. Okay, so I want it to be fine and flowy. Uh, perhaps another thing you might consider doing might turn smoothing off. My shape dynamics, my size unit. What I might have is size jitter, depending upon my pen pressure. Yeah, so I'm getting a nice flowy line. That looks good. Shape dynamics, dictated by pen pressure. Yep, that looks good. So my brush, I feel like, is set up. Close it off now. So I'm just going to reduce my brush size. I'm going to add some hair into this uh, subject. So I might give her some reddish style here. And I might even do it on the new layer. So I can now add this idea of hair into my subject. It's just giving me a more natural looking thing than uh, more hair like looking thing, to be honest. So building that up. So you're getting that more, looking more like hair. Now, Bear in mind, I'm, I'm really flying through this. I'm not spending as much time as I might do, but just the brush that I just made, that's really important. You're getting a really nice brush that way. You know, picking up other colors, just melding them in together. Maybe at the roots of her base of her hair could be a bit darker. And that's sort of that idea here. Um, so I'm, I might do the same with her. Uh, her vest she's got this hairy vest on here so i'm going to repeat that through here so she's got this rug of animal skin so just gives me that ability to create some lovely lovely texture in this piece here so there we go looking good i'm like i said i'm rushing through this just in the interest of getting a nice quick tutorial for you guys playing with your opacities and just building it up till it feels more soft and hairy and flowy. That's sort of the idea with that one. Uh, and brushes, making your own custom brushes like this, 
just just adds a dimension and an element to artwork that you know really is you know fantastic in my book so I'm going to finish that through there, breaking up my colours. All right, okay. What I might do is just pause this for a moment and I'm going to carry on and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you a few more little interesting things with this. So just pausing at this for the moment and I'll see you all in two seconds. Okay, guys, so I'm back. So what I did in the meantime is what I've done is I've just added my tones and my shades. I've put in some flat colours and I really pumped up those shadows and those highlights. As you can see, I've tried to pay attention to the shape and the form of everything on the page. I've just got some shadows in the darks and lights. I'm, as I say, I really like to play up those darks and lights because that's going to really help for the next stage. Cast shadows, lights and darks. So everything's got form now. And that's really the key to getting this thing to really sing. So I'm at this stage now. Next thing is we want to do is start to apply some textures and patterns and adjustment layers and things like that. So I'm going to make some selections with my quick selection tool and I'm going to make sure that I have all layers selected. I'm just going to pick out maybe this area here that she's got a wooden sword. What else might we have? Maybe, maybe that's wooden. Maybe that's wooden. Who knows? All right, so some different bits of texture that I'm thinking. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and show you that anything you bring into Illustrator, or Photoshop I should say, can be turned into a pattern. Now I've already made a pattern, I'll make one in a moment, but I've already made a pattern for this. So I'm going to apply an adjustment layer at the bottom of our screen here. We have adjustment layers, that circle cut in half, half white, half black. Adjustment layer, pattern, now, I've already got a whole bunch of these things here. I love all these patterns. So I've got some stuff already on the go here. So maybe I've gone to use this wood texture. That looks good. So while this fly out menu is here, I can actually click and move this around. It just helps me to sort of line up my pattern where I want it to look. And that looks good to me. So I'm going to say, okay, from here. Now, that's okay, but it does look kind of... Uh, kind of flat, if you like. So with this adjustment layer, what I'm going to do is play with his blending mode. And as you can see, once you start playing with blending modes, crazy and cool things happen. So I really want that shadow to show through that I painted, and I want that to be part of the texture as well. So, you know, colour burn's going to work all right, multiply's going to work all right. So whichever you decide, there you go. And that's really going to add some great depth to your digital illustrations. So I'm just going to crack on with a few more of those. I really love the adjustment layers. So I'm going to make a selection of this uh, bit of the metal here. So maybe her shield cast in some sort of uh, forged metal or something or other. Maybe her, her, uh, her sword, maybe a bit of that. You really do want to have uh, you know, get those, get those lights and darks in, as you can see there. That's really going to help you along to make those patterns really assume the form. Get those highlights and those darks. And then we can apply our adjustment layer. So we're going to do that on our layer there. New uh, adjustment layer. I'm going to go with a pattern. <clears throat> so I'm going to change my pattern out. I think I've got a metal one here already. Maybe I don't. So let's go ahead and make one. So I've got one here. I've got one here. This looks good to me. I might just give that a little pop. Command L for levels. Just really pop it a little bit. That looks good. Okay. Needless to say, I went online. I, I copied an image uh, and I just pasted it into Photoshop. That's all I've done. Copied an image from the web, pasted it in here. And, you know, ideally, ideally your patterns want to be, you know, big-ish. Don't make, don't get little tiny images. Get uh, nice big images. So your patterns will start to get a bit uh, repeaty. They'll start to repeat and you'll have a tile. You don't want that. So nice big texture, pattern, whatever you like. Edit, edit, edit and define pattern. Just like that. There's your pattern. It's embedded in the program. It's saved forever. Go back to your artwork. There's my selection. 
I'm going to apply that adjustment layer now. So when I go again, pattern, and there's the pattern that I just created, which is looking cool. So I'll just zoom away, see what it looks like. That's looking quite good. Um, you can see that, as I say, once this is here open, you can move that in around and just get it where you want, where it sort of works for you. That's okay. Um, and remember that this blending mode is probably going to need to change just to really make it feel there's your texture in there that looks very very good so I'm I'm really quite happy with that uh, we're nearly there with this one I might just put a little texture into her her uh, <clears throat> pants here whatever these things are so a little bit of a uh, bit of that I don't want I want that this little bit here this one here. So I've isolated just her dress part. That looks good to me. So and again, an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are great. Um, pattern, 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 pattern. Uh, so we're going to change it out. I, I'm going to have a fabric for this one. So she could have a nice sort of, some sort of texture. There's, there's a little tartan I could use. That looks great to me. I'm going to say okay. And again, don't forget, change that blending mode. Then it really starts to sit on the model or on the illustration. So, you know, play with these blending modes are incredible things and you never know exactly what you're going to get. Be surprised sometimes. I kind of like that. Um, so there's my sort of digital illustration using blending modes, custom brushes and all sorts of good things. Um, look have fun with that um, and uh, I hope that's been of some use to you guys. I'll see you all in the lesson.